Hey guys, and welcome back to 9180. I'm here at the carriage house and I'm in the front room on the venue side of the house. And the last time you saw this room was in video 18. And I was just getting ready to host a really big um, family Thanksgiving and I had this room decorated as the children's dining room. And really quick, I'm gonna tell you about um, the big change that's happened since then, but then I'm gonna tell you about the really big change that's getting ready to happen. In fact, it's getting started today. My contractor should be here any minute, so I need to speak fast. Um, the last time you saw this room, there was carpet. And um, we ripped out all the carpet, we ripped out all the padding, and all of the awful tack strips. I hate removing tack strips. And you might remember from video three, me telling you about the foundation repairs that had to be made on this side of the house. Um, this is the side of the house that had all of those foundation issues. So we were not shocked when we removed all of the carpet to find that the floors in both this room and the back room were just riddled with cracks. Probably hundreds, if not thousands of cracks. And um, before we could put down any kind of finish on the floor, we had to repair that concrete. And so the first step was to clean it really well. We bought a cleaner from Lowe's. Um, really powerful stuff. In fact, it's so powerful that the instruction said if you leave it on for more, ten min more than 10 minutes, it could actually destroy your concrete. So um, it's really important to make sure you clean it really well because um, that's what pulls up all the oils, all the stains that are, are going to potentially affect the look of the finish afterwards. And so after we cleaned the concrete, it was then time to, of course, fill in all of those cracks. And um, I had used two different types of products. Um, one worked really well for the really fine cracks and the other worked really well for the deeper and wider cracks. And that was a very tedious process. Um, hours and hours spent down on my hands and knees. It makes me very, very happy we did this back in October before I got pregnant. I do not think I'd be able to do that now but um, once we had all of those gaps and the rest of the concrete um, repaired it was then time to pick a finish now this is not um, our permanent flooring solution randy and i want to do something different with the floors but um, we got to wait until all of the major construction is done first so this is really just a temporary solution to get us by and so um, when deciding on that, um, we, number one, had to pick something that was not going to break the bank. You don't ever want to spend too much money on something that's going to get covered up in the future. Um, number two, it had to be something that Randy and I could do ourselves in a matter of days. <laughs> we finished this floor just a couple of days before the first wedding here on the property. And um, number three, it had to be something that could withstand the high traffic that both this room and the back room endure on a regular basis. And so I found a blog, it's called Southern Hospitality, and in one of their posts, they had painted concrete floors in a finished basement with Sherwin-Williams porch enamel. And I really loved the way that it looked, and they chose the color Tony Taupe, which Randy thought leaned a little too far in the tan spectrum of taupe and um, he wanted a color that leaned more on the gray side of taupe and so we chose a color called Morris Room Gray and um, it's done the job so far. It, I think it works well. I will say that um, it's a lot harder to clean than we initially thought it would be. Maybe if the concrete was a smoother surface it'd be easier to clean but um, for a temporary solution, it does the job. So anyway, that's pretty much the only change that's happened since the last time you saw this room, other than um, I have brought in the antiques that I inherited from my Nana. But um, as far as the big project that's gonna get started today, um, this is something that's really important, not only um, for our business, but on a personal level. I have a little cousin named Maddie. She uses a wheelchair. And we really need our home and venue to be accessible to everyone. Um, 
As far as the pandemic goes, there's light at the end of the tunnel. In a couple of weeks, I'll be fully vaccinated. Randy is already fully vaccinated, and we plan to start having more family functions here on top of all of the weddings and events that will hopefully take place soon. And um, in just a couple of, in a few weeks, um, my little cousin JJ, he's having his graduation party here. After that, it'll be my baby shower. I'd like to do another big Thanksgiving this year. And somewhere in between, I'd like to book some weddings and stuff. And so we really need this place to be accessible to everyone. And um, you might remember from video 18, me showing you this bathroom. This is the main restroom on the venue side. And it's very tiny. The configuration is a very cramped layout with the sink right across from the toilet and not very much space in between. Definitely not accessible. And we're going to turn this into an ADA compliant restroom. And the way we're going to do that whoops, is we're going to delete this wall. We're going to delete this front wall and we're going to build a new wall about right here that's going to expand the full width of the room. And um, instead of the sink being across from the toilet, it's now going to be next to the toilet. We're actually not going to use that pedestal sink. I purchased an ADA compliant wall mounted sink and we're going to re replace the toilet as well with an ADA compliant toilet. And um, I purchased these assist bars and I've done all of my research and I've got all of my papers um, taped up everywhere for the contractor to see um, exactly what height the sink is supposed to be at, exactly what height the assist bars are supposed to be at, exactly how much space should be between the toilet and the sink and how much space needs to be in front of the toilet. And the really great thing about this bathroom taking up the full width of the room now is not only will there be enough room for wheelchair accessibility, but there will also be enough space for someone to get changed in. Um, we've had two weddings here so far. Um, one was Halloween of last year, and um, the other was Spring Equinox this past March. And in both of those scenarios, the bride chose to get ready in the honeymoon suite, and the groom chose to get ready in here. And how much easier would it have been <laughs> for the groom if he would have had a restroom that he could actually go inside of and get changed in. And so for future events, I'm really excited that we're gonna have that option for them. But um, anyway, I think that's just about it. I wanted to make sure that you saw the change that's been made since video 18 and also um, what the restroom looked like before we get started today. I really hope we get started today. Um, but anyway, I think that's about it, and you guys have a great day. I can't wait to show you the after.